Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Ray Rauer. Here. Councilmember Hernandez Jr. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Carlson. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. Uh, next is to adopt this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Carlson to adopt the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. Actually, I should abstain since I was stuck in an airport during that meeting, I think. For the agenda? Oh, for the <laughs> for, for the minutes is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't have any proclamations and presentations. Speaking of that, we're up to the approval of the minutes of the previous minute of the previous meeting. Um, Mayor? Thank you. Councilman. I'll make a motion ahead. to approve the minutes of January 4th, 2022. I second. Motion by Kraskoviak, second by Hernandez Jr. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And now I'll abstain. <laughs> that motion carries one abstention, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have five items on our consent agenda this evening. The first one is item two on this evening's agenda, and that's to accept the right of entry agreement with MK Property Holdings, LLC. Um, the council approved a final plat for MK Business Park, dividing the property into two commercial lots. The developer removed the existing small convenience store located at 1829 North Dell Boulevard in late 2021 and plans to redevelop the site with a multi-tenant commercial building and a car wash. I feel like we're answering so many social media <laughs> questions right now. This is the corner of Hanson and Northdale where the BP used to be and uh, they're redeveloping it and they're adding a multi-tenant commercial building and a car wash. Okay. The right of entry agreement will allow the city to enter onto both properties to maintain the water main system for public safety purposes, including hydrant flushing twice per year and exercising of the gate valves. The water main system within the site is considered private and the property owner will continue to own and maintain it. The right of entry agreement simply provides the city the ability to assure appropriate public safety. So with that, with this action, we'll be looking to accept the attached right of entry agreement with MK Property Holdings LLC for the redevelopment of the site at 829 Northdale Boulevard Northwest. Uh, the next item on our consent agenda is to approve final payment to Municipal Builders Incorporated for Project 21-7 Well Rehabilitation. Um, we've got lots of dates, but the final completion date was October 29, 2021, and the amount under the final contract was $43,225. So we're looking to approve the final payment to Municipal Builders Incorporated in the amount of $9,289.20 for Project 21-7 Well Rehabilitation. Item 4, which is the next item on our consent agenda, which is item 3 of 5 actually, is to approve final payment to S.M. Henches and Sons Incorporated for Project 18-13 Coon Rapids Boulevard Improvements at Port Riverwalk. Uh, the complete, final completion date of this project was June 26, 2021, and the amount due is $76,843.73. Um, this one we actually went a little over. The change orders for were for additional earthwork excavation done along the old Coon Rapids Boulevard frontage road, additional storm sewer trench rock required during construction due to field conditions, adding flowable fill material at the Coon Rapids Boulevard bridge under the existing concrete slope paving, revising the storm sewer design along Coon Rapids Boulevard, uh, removal of buried concrete at the Coon Rapids Boulevard and Zilla Street intersection, redesign of the irrigation system to include <coughs> rotating spray heads, 
and additional work and materials required to provide an adequate pavement section based on in-soil condition, um, I'm sorry, conditions. So we're looking to approve the change orders and the final payment to SM Henches and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $76,843.73 for project 18-13, Coon Rapids Boulevard improvements at Port Riverwalk. Next item on our consent agenda is to adopt resolution 22-23 accepting a donation for a park bench. The family of Bob Thistle has donated $700 to purchase a park bench as a tribute to Bob Thistle, who recently passed away. Bob was the city manager from July 1979 through December of 1987. He also served as a volunteer on the Civil Service Commission, and he was also so involved with so many things. Uh, but the family is donating $700 to dedicate a, dedicate a park bench in his name. So we're looking to adopt resolution 22-23 to accept a $700 donation from the family of Bob Thistle. And then item five, I'm sorry, yes. item six, um, which is the fifth and final item on our consent agenda is to adopt resolution 22-24, accepting a donation to the fire department Mr. Eugene Merriam donated $1,000 to the fire department in appreciation for their service to the community. Uh, we're looking to adopt resolution 2224, formally accepting the donation. And that's actually, that's the motion. Uh, we're looking to adopt resolution 22-24, accepting a donation to the fire department. And that was a very generous donation of Mr. Merriam for $1,000. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. With uh, particular thanks to Jean Miriam and the family of Bob Thistle, I would like to move approval and acceptance and adoption of the items on the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Council Member Gruskowiak. Echo the gratitude that we have for the generosity on those two uh, donations. We know that the park bench will be in Lyons Park. <laughs> Do we know what the uh, donation <laughs> to the fire department would be used for? Or is it up to the discretion of the fire department? The fire chief's not here. <laughs> Mayor, Council, it, it has not been specified as of yet what okay. that contribution will be used toward. But um, typically, donations of this type get used for like community programming of some sort, sure. whether it be in the schools, uh, smoke detector program, things like that. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just for those who may not know, Jean Miriam is a Coon Rapids resident, served on the council for a long time. Um, also served in the state senate and was the commissioner of the department of natural resources for a long period of time too. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Carlson. I just want to add, uh, well, yeah, thanks to you, uh, Jean Merriam and, and thanks to the Thistle family and I had the, uh, the privilege of uh, working for uh, um, Bob Thistle uh, for a year. Uh, class act and a wonderful servant of this community. All right. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. We are on to item seven, which is to consider resolution 22-3 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for 105th Avenue, Hanson Boulevard Mill and Overlay, and authorized solicitation of bids. Mr. Himmer, you wanna cover that? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council, similar to the last few years, we look at some of our state aid roadways that have minimal accessible properties on them, and we look at trying to do an early season project um, to get ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, of the construction season and get uh, paving contractors when they're hungry. So it's been successful for us for the last few years. We've identified these two roadways as the next um, ones to have that treatment, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All those people that go to Riverview Park for National Little League, or Cardinal Little League now, mm -hmm. or Pizza Flame, are gonna be very thankful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 22-3 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for 105th Avenue and Hanson Boulevard mill and overlay, um, and authorize the solicitation of bids. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Ray Rauer. Any discussion on this? Um, this is really, we have found this to be a really good value, these mill and overlays. We've done this to Xavis and to 
um, Avocet, and I don't recall what else we've done, but it really is a good value on that little section of Crooked Lake Boulevard, too, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good value. All right, uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are on to item eight to consider introduction of an ordinance repealing chapter 5 1800 saunas, massage parlors, and similar adult oriented services, masseurs, and masseuses. Sounds like we just ended up with a little redundancy here. Ms. Mr. Mayor, that's correct. That section is no longer needed as we regulate it through the therapeutic massage code with the educational requirements. All right. Does anybody have any questions or need any updating on this? Mr. All right. Hearing, hearing none, then we will consider this introduced. <laughs> Our next item, which is also just an introduction, is to consider an introduction of an ordinance repealing section 5-1900, uh, which covers conversation parlors. <laughs> and in this one isn't a redundancy, we're apparently just eliminating this section. Mr. Mayor, that's correct. It's no longer something that folks do with the advent of the internet. <laughs> I had to look it up. I wasn't even <laughs> sure what it was. That's exactly what it sounds like, <laughs> sort of, but... <laughs> um, Anybody have any questions or need any further information on this? Your Honor. <laughs> Councilmember Johnson? I, I just want people to understand that this is part of what the city, um, and I, I have to give credit to Wade Demmer uh, too as a part of this, has asked, um, the city council has asked the city staff to do, which is to take a look at all of our ordinances. And if there are ones that are particularly unnecessary anymore, then let's just tidy up the ordinances that we have. And so that's part of this review process. And I really appreciate city staff taking a look at the ones that really just don't even make any sense anymore. So we don't have to wade through that or have any of that flack in there. So. It is a little strange that we have to introduce an ordinance to repeal an ordinance, but that is the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and apparently if you do want a conversation parlor, Rosemont still licenses them. Because that was my internet search that brought me there. <laughs> and if you're really against this, go ahead and email your city council. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, let us know before the next meeting if this or is going to... Yeah. yeah. All right, so if there's no questions or discussion, we will consider... Um, We'll consider the ordinance repealing section 5 1900 introduced. Item 10 is to consider resolution 22 25, establishing Bunker Hills golf course fees and charges. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you want to come up and talk to us, or are you going to sit there and talk to us? Or well, I could, do I, you want to wait and see if anybody has any questions? No, I can, I can certainly, if you can hear me. Um, I can go, I can kind of go over things. You know, it's good news certainly in my in mind. If we're here asking for rates that there will be a golf season at some point, it's fun to operate a golf simulator center. But there's nothing like the real thing, and we can't wait to get back after it. Hopefully in March uh, and beyond. So what you see here is more than normal uh, increases recommended. Where we have more of a substantial increase are those areas where we were somewhat significantly under market. Uh, uh, you know, less than our competitive set. That's in our midday and our twilight rates. You know, these rates, uh, the recommended increases are, are mainly for two reasons this year. One is because we were significantly below uh, market, and then the cost of doing business has gone up in a lot of ways. You know, it's not the cheapest sport to play. It's not the cheapest recreational activity, but it's also very expensive to operate, and I know that you all know that. Um, certainly, um, golf has gotten more popular recently, and we love that, and we hope that continues, um, but we have to plan for a long-term future and, and satisfy our bottom line um, requirements. So that's why you see a little bit bigger increases at those times, and then just minimal increases on our regular fees. Uh, not all of them. Uh, junior rates have not increased. And then our, our patron cards that we sell, and last year we sold a record number uh, well over 2,000 patron card members at Bunker Hills. Those have not gone up in quite a few years, so we are recommending a, a $5 increase on all of our uh, annual memberships. And then the only other one of note 
is the individual power cart, which is a new rate. Um, when you come to a golf course and rent a cart, most all golf courses you rent one side of the cart, and we've always had that rate. Um, but over time and for a long time, people have wanted to ride alone. It became, you know, it was very interesting. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was mandated you ride alone. And then it was, there was a divider in the cart and et cetera, et cetera. But we wanted to make sure there was a rate if someone did want to ride alone and purchase the entire cart. So we've added that in there at essentially double the rate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of an abrupt end, but that's kind of, <laughs> well, and it was, it was. And, that kind know. of summarizes the, the recommended <laughs> proposed yeah. increases. Of course, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Yeah, well, and I'm assuming you still have your smiling face behind there somewhere. We're just not it's, seeing it. So. It's in there somewhere, yes. Right, okay, that's good. Um, so most of these rates are like, you know, that, that retail slide, you know, the 38 to 39 or, you know, 18 to 20. I'm just wondering, you know, when you, when you bump over to the, the, the next hump, you know, when you, when you go to the store, everything's 29.99. I'm just, do you, you think we're going to have any pushback on some of those? Some of those rates that make the bigger jumps? You know, I don't think so. I think that they were so competitively priced, and, and a lot of, there was a lot of reason for that. We were soft in those areas for, for a few years, so we bumped those rates actually down a little bit. Normally, we just float our regular rate through the afternoon and on. We reduced those rates. So those are just bumping up a little bit, but nowhere, um, not, not to where they were before. Okay. So they're increasing more to the middle. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Anderson? Your Honor. Councilman Bray Rower. I make a motion to adopt resolution 22-25, establishing Bunker Hills Golf Course fees and charges. Second. Motion and a second. We're not even going to make them squirm at all. <laughs> I think you did a great job. I, mean, I, I, I think, I think uh, the, these, uh, there isn't a, I think the, the only change that is even approaching 10% is a $4 bump. Yeah. So um, I, th I was actually surprised that they were, you know, as little as they were. So it's yep. a great value. All right. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, item 11 is to affirm a declaration regarding public meetings and the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Stemwettel. Mayor, Council, this is intended to provide some flexibility over the coming weeks related to uh, public meetings and such that uh, if there are council members or members of our commissions that have a need to attend via electronic means, in our case we use Zoom, or if they just have an underlying health condition or some other reason pandemic related for attending that official meeting uh, via electronic means that they could do that and not be required to be in a public place, which is a bit of a sticking point um, in, uh, in the statute when you don't sort of make this declaration of pandemic. And so ultimately what the statute requires is uh, for uh, one of the key officials in the city to make a declaration that it's not prudent and practical at this time to compel everybody to meet in person. Um, so via this uh, memo on Friday, I made that declaration, at least that's the vehicle we used. What I'm asking council to do tonight is confirm that and then uh, what we've done is suggest a timeline that uh, council approve this through March 1st. Really, ultimately, that's for planning purposes. If we get towards March 1st, uh, that coincides with the city council meeting, we could extend it that night if the council would so choose, <clears throat> or we could let it expire You know, if uh, COVID cases seem like they're in a much more manageable spot. So that's really the intent of this item, and I'll stand for questions. I think that's reasonable. I mean, today was, they just, the Mayo just came out with their study and they figured we're going to peak in eight days and then we should have a precipitous drop off. Mm -hmm. So I thought, the, I thought the date, the timeline was good. I also noticed that we're, uh, we're getting a little more strict. You know, last time I think we got a little more relaxed with the Zoom, but um, if participating through electronic means, the council or commission member must be able to be seen and heard at all times by all other members and the public. And additionally, if there are council or commission members attending a meeting through electronic means, the body must conduct votes by roll call so that each member's vote can be identified and recorded. Yes, Mayor Council, and that's language from the statute itself. And some of this language um, 
was borrowed from the League of Minnesota City's guidance on electronic meetings. So it wasn't necessarily what we invented, but it's the process that's been outlined for us. Sure. Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. I would move that the City Council affirm the City Manager's declaration under Minnesota Statute 13D.021 that conducting public meetings solely in person is not practical or prudent um, and recommend that the City establish that this temporary policy is effective through March 1st, 2022 unless otherwise acted upon by the City Council. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. Discussion? Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson. Hey, I really appreciate city staff um, opening up this, this opportunity and uh, consulting with the council about it. I mean, as some of the council members here know, um, you know, I had planned to be at the January uh, 4th meeting um, and because of COVID and because of cancellations of flights and being forced to rebook flights um, to return, I was unable to attend the city council meeting. Um, notwithstanding my intentions on, on being here in person for that meeting and, and booking to do it. Had this been in place at that point in time, I would have been able to attend the city council meeting and participate in it, um, albeit it would have been from an airport where mm -hmm. I was on a layover, but I would have been able to still participate. Um, and so there are just things that are happening in the world, um, you know, like cancellations of flights or sometimes like exposures that um, require us to have this flexibility and I appreciate um, the council being open to that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, so I, I would reiterate, reiterate, reiterate that, you know, just the, the flexibility because we don't know, you know, who's gonna feel good next week or whatever. And, you know, if you have been exposed but still wanna participate, that's important for us, especially as elected officials to be able to participate and to have that flexibility you know, and give us that option should we need it over the next month. All right, any other discussion? Oh, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. I am in support of this, especially with the effective date, you know, of March 1st, uh, and then we'll look at it again. But we talked about it in work session too, but it, it, it is gonna be more disruptive if people aren't here and things like that, and to do a roll call and everything like that. And it is, we talked about this, it's just more productive when the body's together. So hopefully we'll be able to maintain that for the public. Yeah, well, and I think with most of the council having had COVID in the last two weeks, we should, we should be Didn't good be now. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I am. I'm just, I know the numbers here, but. Uh. That's true, that is the majority. Yeah, all right. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> And that motion carries. Um, all right, we are up to the open mic public comment portion. And unless somebody from staff wants to talk to us, I think we're gonna skip through that. Um, and we are on to uh, other business. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Uh, I just wanted to say, so obviously last Friday there was some snow and on Saturday there was an all plow. So where they went out for the whole city. and sent my little note on Friday and said, can I ride along? And so I got to go um, ride along with the snowplow drivers on Saturday morning. It was not quite fun getting up at 3.30 in the morning, mind you, but I wanted to thank Josh Peterson, um, who helped coordinate that along with Mr. Himmer, and then Mark Starr, who was the driver. And it was a fabulous experience. And so anybody on council, if you haven't done it yet, go, go do it. But for residents, Yes, if it was Friday was your trash day, it's Saturday, your cans really should be back in. Please, it makes it so much easier for the drivers. The other piece, if you are, do have your cans out and it's a pickup day, make sure that they're out of the street, right? We don't want to have the plow drivers risk, you know, hitting a full can or anything like that and making a mess. And then again, we have no overnight parking and there was, a lot of empty garbage cans still in the streets and, and cars parked that were, made it a little bit more difficult to, to get all the way through and do the job that they need to do, but they do a phenomenal job and I wanted to thank them for the opportunity and it, they do a great job. Yeah, they do. Mr. Hammer, was the, uh, we got the full plow on Saturday because of the winds? Because we didn't get three inches, did we? 
Does this Shamir. seem like the exact same scenario we had a couple of weeks Just earlier? It, it was between the Friday and Saturday. So as it was snowing Friday evening, we, we always pull off the roads prior to that evening commute. So we clean up the best we can on the collector roads. And then we came back to do a full plow, which really was just clean up those collectors one more time and do the residential neighborhoods. So we wouldn't have to have the compaction and everything that comes back the following uh, Monday, okay. which would so have been was, which would have been Tuesday because of the extra holiday. And sure. so there was the let's combine Friday and Saturday into this period and, and go out and try to address it before it sits for an extra day or two. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was just, I was surprised when I saw the note that doing the full plow. I was I was glad, but I was just surprised when I saw it. So. Now I know to blame Council Member Geisler for that three foot wall at the end of my drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 well, we're going in your ward. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, just one other. Yeah, Council Member Johnson. I just wanted to say I I'm just teasing a little bit here. Those plows that we bought the new plows that have the added features to them in cul-de-sacs, holy cow, do they work nicely. Um, there is a marked difference in um, how clean they get the cul-de-sacs and how they're able to direct things to a particular place. And so I just wanted to commend Public Works um, on that. I, uh, Mr. Himmer uh, brought that idea to us recently, and, and I think that's been a great addition to the arsenal that we have for dealing with the snow. Thank well, you. I will thank you, but I won't take all the credit because right. Josh Peterson does a heck of a job, as do the employees that are out plowing the snow. They know what they need and they ask for it and you all provide it. So yeah, thank please you. thank them for us. Yeah. All right, sounds good. I didn't get to drive, but that was probably <laughs> a good thing. Thankfully. <laughs> I was just picturing Johnson lives there, pile the snow there. <laughs> Other business to come before council this evening. Mr. Stemwell, anything? Mayor Council, I guess I'll just mention that Winter Concert Series is coming up here. You can get your tickets, so you can check that out online. Yeah, we just had our first one last week, I think, on yeah. the 13th, right? And, and the next one is February 10th, the Backyard Band. But we also have Snowflake Days. That's coming up, the ice sculpture um, contest. And I don't know if we've got another meeting before the community parade. Maybe we do, there's two parades, February 1st and February 3rd, so I think it's the, the first night of our next council. Um, and then the family fund at um, the Ice Arena on Sunday, February 6th. So lots of things coming up in the next couple of weeks with Snowflake Day, so check that out on the website. So. Yep, mm -hmm. very good. Everybody should have gotten a city newsletter a, couple, like a week or two ago in the mail, and I am, I implore you to go through it. It's got all the Snowflake Days information in it. It has all of the, the housing programs that we have, the front door, the home for generations, all of those are in there. Um, so just it's a lot of a wealth of information for the city. Yeah, that's one that shouldn't be thrown away because all year long you can draw upon the information that's in there. Yep. yep. Yeah, and all of us, our contact information, so if there's anything you know you need to reach out, um, and then the other piece is our budget. Our budget and brief just got posted. So the financial budget for you know this year is out. We just got our hard copy books tonight. And so all of that is also available on our website. All right. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscovia. Well, we have our public works director here. I noticed there was a public notice last week that there could potentially be some aeration on Crooked Lake and it looks like it would be kind of right outside that fishing pier. Is, uh, does that happen for sure? Is there a certain criteria where that would happen? Yes, Councilman Ruskowiak, that is something that typically does happen on an annual basis. We uh, correspond with the DNR, and when they find that um, levels are meeting a certain threshold, then they contact us to go ahead and fire that up and get it going. It, it, I've been here 10 years, and I don't remember a year that we didn't turn it on. All right. And is it in the same spot? Yes. It is, okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Any other business to come before council this evening? Mr. Mayor. Chief Wise. Actually, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, there's going to be a story in, on um, Channel 5 KSTP tonight. A good Samaritan in the city of Coon Rapids. Um, 
we had a car that fled from our officers, um, eventually came to a stop. The man jumped out of his car with an AR-15 rifle. Uh, Good Samaritan jumped from his house, seeing what happened and tackled the person. Now, obviously, we don't recommend citizens doing that. Um, that said, um, it'd be a sad state of affairs if I didn't uh, do a shout out to this fellow and there'll be something in front of the council in the future. So just want to let you know about that. So I'm not sure where to go with that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a peculiar story, but I didn't want, it's going to be in the news and somebody's going to bring it up to you, so I didn't want to have it not get mentioned to you tonight. Yeah. So just yeah. watch the news story on KSTV. I, I mean, could have been a completely different outcome. <clears throat> yep. you know, but mm -hmm. right. I love this community. Yeah. Absolutely. It's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I don't know how we're going to top that, so somebody <laughs> should just make a motion to end this. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Carlson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned.